Hey everyone, you're listening to the official podcast of 4playernetwork.com. With the onset of our first ever Fantasy Critic League, this has been a fun and exciting year for us. Get our takes on the latest games, industry news, and weekly league updates by joining us for our live recordings every Thursday night at 8pm Central on twitch.tv slash 4playerpodcast, all spelled out. Audio episodes launch on all podcast services Monday mornings at 9 a.m. Central, along with the VODs on YouTube, but Patreon and Twitch subscribers can get the episodes a day or two early each week. No matter how you prefer to tune in, just know that everyone is invited to jump into our lively community Discord at discord.gg slash 4player. But enough about that, let's get down to business. Hey everyone, welcome to 4 Player Podcast. This is episode 763. It is July 13th, 2023. I'm your host this evening, Nick Henderson, joined, as always, by Brad Simons. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Nolan Hedstrom. Hey, how's it going, everybody? And joining us for the first time since our initial fantasy critic draft at the beginning of the year is, is Carlos. I, yeah, I'm pretty sure, right? No, I did. I did one with Brad. Uh, oh, show. that's right. That was a stream. Okay. Yeah, that was a stream, though. This is a podcast. So unless you're like watching the streams religiously, this is probably the first time people have like heard your voice on the show in a while. So uh, tonight's going to be a little bit of a different kind of show. We've talked about this kind of since the beginning when we were starting to do Fantasy Critic and whatnot. And we're like, well, you know, we'll probably around the middle of the year sometime when things are, I don't want to say slowing down. Because I certainly don't think that's what's happening here. Um, but I think we're all kind of, you know, balls deep in huge games at the moment that we've talked about at length on the podcast. So, uh, And the Chris's, Chris Davis and Chris B are both out this week. So... I figured this would be a good opportunity for us to kind of just talk about the year so far, look at our, our rosters for Fantasy Critic going forward, kind of see how we're feeling, um, see how like the rest of the year just in general kind of looks. And, you know, I, I don't know where this conversation is going to go, but I think that's just going to kind of be the gist of, of the show tonight. Uh, we'll do a four-player minute at the end, but uh, for the most part, I just want to talk Fantasy Critic, see how everybody's feeling. This is our first time doing this. And I do want to remind everybody, if you're, if you're just catching up, if you're just joining and in, jumping into the community or jumping into the Discord, and you're like, what's all this fantasy critic talk about? Go back and listen to our first episode of the year back in January, where we did our initial drafts. It's like fantasy football, but with video games. It's fun. It's great. Um, but that's a very important episode to go listen to, so I would highly recommend that. But before we get into it tonight, really, I want to take a moment to catch up with Carlos because Carlos, you've been kind of you've been kind of quiet on the fantasy critic front lately. Man, How- once they announced that Alan Wake release date, I kind of just gave up. You know? <laughs> well, that's not good. I mean, why? I mean, why? I'm not gonna you know, lie. Alan Wake, remember, Alan remember Wake one's an 83. Night, remember dude. on draft night when it was time for me to make my counter pick, and I asked you, Nick, choose one or two. Wait, what? Wait, wait, you said choose one on, on or- draft night when it was when I was making oh, my counter pick. I right, asked you, right, 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 right. Choose, choose one or two, Nick. So my two choices were Alan Wake 2 and Silent Hill 2. Yes. And you fucked me. You chose Alan Wake 2. Mm, I did choose Alan I Wake 2. I don't think it was a bad counter pick because it's, it was Remedy, and I still don't necessarily think Yeah, like, I'm, I'm very surprised delayed. that the game is coming I think it could still get delayed. Uh, still delayed shit. So for those of you who maybe are not paying super close attention to the Fantasy Critic and you're just kind of playing catch-up here... Uh, Counter picks are basically we, we we did our draft at the beginning of the year. If someone counter picks your game, that means one of two things. It means uh, one that person can no longer drop that game, even if the game is delayed or whatever. They got to hold on to it. It's 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 stuck on their list permanently. And two, when that game releases or doesn't release, the points um, uh, if it scores high, the person who counter picked it loses points. Yep. Or did I say that backwards? Okay, so got it. in this instance, Carlos counterpicked Alan Wake 2, which is on my list, which means, uh, I think you were betting, correct me if I'm wrong, Carlos, you were betting primarily on the fact that Alan Wake 2 wasn't even going to come out this year. Of course so not. You, so you were kind of hoping it would be just a, a goose egg for both of us. Is it, um, is it possible to actually gain points from my counterpick? Like if I counter- if they go pick negative, him, yeah. Yeah, 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 if yeah, yeah absolutely. Redfall, they would have earned like yeah. 12 If it points. goes below, If it goes below 70, 
okay, you get one point for every point below. Choice for a but with the caveat really? being, yeah, no, with the caveat being that I think there's an upward limit on the number of points yeah. you can lose okay. from a counter pick. I think if if it That's if true. it hits like I think if it hits like twenty, it just it tops out at twenty. So if some if something scored like a thirty out of a hundred or whatever, you would you would lose a oh. maximum of twenty points. I believe. That's interesting. That's interesting because I feel like. What's probably going to happen during our draft next year is someone is going to draft the next mainline 3D Mario game. And I don't think anybody's going to have the balls to counterpick that because no, that pro- would be pro- losing 38 points or whatever the fuck. Right? Well, no, 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 no. Well, yeah, well, why, yeah, yeah, yeah. Why would you counter like that? I think no, so. I'm saying, I'm saying because it's unannounced, right? Mm-hmm. They would counterpick it, bet, betting on the fact that it wouldn't even come gotcha. out that I mean, year. It's not but even that would be dangerous. Gotcha. I mean, it'd be very dangerous. <laughs> Yeah, it would be super dangerous. But like, if someone were to do that, you know, like an unannounced Mortal Kombat, you you counterpick it because it just ha- wasn't announced, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, it, he was the laughing stock because of that. Well, he picked it third. That was the real problem. But like, um, man, what a, what a what a twist, man! What a fucking twist. We'll we'll get to that here in a second. But Carlos, like I said, you've been a little quiet. I haven't seen many bids from you. Your list isn't full. In well, fact, let, I think let's you. Let's go to Carlos. Is we could start with him. Right? Yeah, let's start. Let's start with Carlos and and just kind of run down your roster and talk about your list so far. I mean, you you, you said you you kind of gave up with the Alan Wake thing, but that you're not. You've been you've been paying attention. I know you've been paying attention. Don't lie yeah, to me, and Carlos. Yeah, and I looked at my list. Uh, I was looking at it yesterday, and I actually feel pretty good about every game that's released so far, and I feel good about the games I have on my list that haven't released yet. Like, I Shut completely forgot up. that I had Counter-Strike 2 in there. Yeah. You have Routine on there. That's a good Routine. Well, okay, well, let's get... Hold on a second. So, real quick, just you to recap. Routine is why I think Nick is still in, like, an okay position still. Thanks for that, Carlos. <laughs> I counterpicked Routine. But real quick, uh, so far, uh, right now, Carlos is sitting at 40 points on the board because he, he had Star Wars Jedi Survivor, which pulled in 14 points because it got an 84. Oxen Free 2, which just dropped this week, is currently sitting at a 78, so he has 8 points. Uh, and if you're just if you're paying attention, that basically means every point above 70, you get a point. And then every point every for every point it scores above 90, you get 2 points. Uh, so Company of Heroes 3... Uh, has eight points still. That's actually fluctuated a few it. times. You know, well, no, it was like at a, an eighty for a very long time, and then the console version came out and it went down. <laughs> it still didn't go down low enough to not hurt Brad. A couple of points. Yeah. No, but I I think losing eight points on a counter pick is like probably average, probably what you you want to see happen. Um, yeah. You know, I think I think the ideal is a no ship, right? Like a seventy. For sure, um, that's that's the best scenario you could be in. If you're going over ten points, then I feel like you know you maybe just kind of got unlucky with that counter pick, right? Uh, but um, like like counter pick example, like uh, Nolan counter picked Hogwarts Legacy, and yeah. I lucked out by pulling an eighty four, uh, got an eighty four, I mean, so I hit fourteen Hogwarts, points. But like, of here's all the, the thing: games this year, it was like a super over performer. I think pretty much everybody expected dude, this it, is going to be some mid seventies game dude, the, that is going to make still, Hogwarts. Yeah, for sure. There's still that one, like, uh, I can't remember, it was like a video, or, like, uh, summarizing someone's review. And mm-hmm. it was all like, oh, this is bad. The things are repetitive. I don't like this. Yeah. Uh, th- this that. is bad. Uh, all of this stuff is bad. I hate this, blah, blah, blah. 10 out of 10. And it's like, what the Unproven fuck are you dead. talking about? How, how can you. What's up? Oh, yeah. Unpro- yeah. But it's just like one of those things that it's like. I honestly think that game scored way higher than it as was. as somebody who played sixty hours of that. I agree it over it overperformed, and I like that game. But you're right. It, I am really surprised that it did so well for me. Uh, here's the thing: it like no one you counterpicked it, and you lost fourteen points on it. But at the same time, you're also still do- <laughs> kind of in a really good. You're kind of dominating here. Just yeah, just, but we'll yeah, get to that. Here's, we'll get to I, that. I didn't, yeah, I didn't want to get to that. But his other counterpick. I think is like a pretty pivotal, like him versus crispy sort of situation. Mm-hmm. And I think, I think space Marines not going to ship. We'll get there. We'll so, get there. So okay. real quick on Carlos's list, the, he has four games of ship star Wars, Jedi survivor, which did really well. Oxen free Two, company of heroes three and horizon call of the mountain, which pulled in an 80. So you got 10 points on that. The rest of his list has not dropped yet. Um, and you still got, yeah. what is it? Uh, four, four, slots. Four, four, slots. four empty slots. So how are you feeling yeah, right now? Carlos so has a drop as well. Uh, I got a couple of games that I'm going to add to my list like in the next couple of weeks. They're He's just going to casually add them to his list. He, no one's going to release this, but I'm staying <laughs> quiet about them. 
Okay. I mean, that. Well, I mean, so many of us have used up so much of our money. I mean, I've filled up so much of our list, anyways. See, you're at the. This is why I was kind of saying, like, Nick, just wait, just wait, just wait. Because we're getting yeah. to the point where no matter what it is, like, this fucking Red Dead thing, right? Shit's going to pop up and it's going to be like, well, fuck. I have no money left or no I have spot, no more no slots slice. left. Yeah. And you're going to, people are going to have like no competition. And just going to be able to get really good games, right? I'm also True. I'm going to worry a little bit about Silk Song, which I think is like my flagship title. No. Yeah, that's what I... Well, I, think it's, I think it's going to be... Not only think... not releasing, but, them, but Team Cherry's always been like super quiet. So if the game is delayed, they just won't talk about it. No, no, no. What do you no, mean they they've will. always they been will. super quiet? They've released one game ever. <laughs> no, no, no. But, but it's, they're going to... They, so they will definitely say something. So you don't have they, to worry about that. Like, no, every, no, every, every they already have, though. Phone. They already have. That's no, like, info. The, the Microsoft conference put it in, like, one year from now, right? Team Cherry came out, made an official statement saying, look, it's not going to make the first half of the year. It's going to come out later in the year. Because they said that, they have to make another statement again if it doesn't actually ship this year. The thing is, I believe it will ship this year, and I believe we're probably going to hear about it. Maybe even a small, small, small chance of a shadow drop at ID at Xbox. When but when think, when is that when is that event? I, right, isn't that coming up, or did that already happen? I don't actually. I think I that know, happened this week, didn't it? But but here's the thing: we also still have Gamescom coming up. I don't know if Gamescom is say a, a you know Nindy's event. You know, it's I happen. mean, but also like they're high profile enough. Like Team Cherry, Hollow Knight was such was is critically acclaimed. Like everybody has been waiting for that game. Yeah, they, I don't think I don't it's going to get Shadow Drop. It's going to have a big launch. Well, I know here, mm-hmm. I was going to go the opposite direction. I was going to say, they could drop that any day of the week at any point, and it wouldn't, it, I don't think it would hurt their sales at, at all. Like, if they could yeah. just, they could just be like, hey, I finished it. I'm going to drop it tomorrow. <laughs> and I think it'd be fine. Well, it, it, it could be, it could be like a Nindy's Shadow Drop, or like a Nindy's, it, hey, this shit's out fucking next week. You know, there, also, it does also, not need a long marketing cycle. Also, between it Gamescom is, and Game media. Awards, there's still two big high profile events happening where an announcement could be made. Um, not to Game mention, you know, world. you know, Microsoft and Sony and Nintendo could any one of them could do their own like, you know, Nintendo Direct yeah. kind of event and and drop it at any at any time or at least give it a release date. Um, I, I think Brad's right. I think whether it comes out this year or not, you're going to find out about it. I I have yeah. several games on my list where I'm kind of in the same same uh position where i'm like i don't know if it's going to come out this year or if they're going to be quiet about it but i think they're all they have to say. in positions where like they're going to say something um one way or the other so only we'll see what happens indies. like there, there are some really like in, like interesting indie games that i'm really excited about but because they weren't because i don't trust the dev to say anything i did not bid on them or draft them ha, ha, uh, one thing song is a game Carlos, is going to be on game pass quick. right yeah, what? it's on Game Pass. Yeah, Silk Song's gonna be on Game Pass, yeah. and I, I, I think yeah. that's why I thought it would be an Xbox event. But... Yeah, that's true. Um, hey, Star Wars Jedi Survivor. I just want to say that like 14 points. I feel like people talked up that game so much. I'm actually a little surprised. I think that's it. I think that's an 84. I think that's an underperformer. I, I I thought the way people talked about it, at least when they were playing the game. I think it's before, mostly technical the issues. Came out like that. That game. I thought that would game be high eighties, even a ninety, maybe. Like people but were. It did have a lot of technical game. issues. I think it's mostly tech. And that's so I'm guessing that brought the average yeah, score. But so did so did it every scored well this year. in spite of all of the technical hiccups that it had. Mm. Um. So the next. So you also have the thing is you also have Spider Man Two, which I think I think despite what Brad thinks, <laughs> I think is going to be one way or the other going to be a heavy hitter. Even if it's not a ninety, it's going to be like high eighties. Yeah, it'll, 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 it'll be an eighty-eight, eighty-nine, eighty-five yeah, at yeah. least. And yeah. so, Insomniac has like shipped one ninety and plus in their life, and it was one of the Ratchet and Clank games. Mm, mm, that's <laughs> so, true. You know, that's just the kind of debt they are. That's here's fine, the thing. Here's fine. the thing, it's though. People, good. people love Venom, right? I don't know. I think there's a lot of high. You know, people love themselves some like they're like those Venom movies are making a third one right now. Like the, like those those movies should not be as popular or as exciting as as they are. But people have made them that because everybody loves yeah, Venom. It's not gonna get a point. No, there. people love uh, Tom Hardy. You're getting it wrong. Oh, uh, that's. I mean, people love Tom Hardy and Venom, and when you bring those two things together, no matter how bad it is, it. <laughs> I, st- I still think the Ultra Kill Snipe is one of like the most savage, like and savvy plays of this league because none of y'all 
probably even knew what the fuck. Well, I mean, y'all probably heard of it, but like, but like only Carlos knew enough about the early access, like, like rollout to know like it was probably not going to drop. And I did draft that knowing that if it came out, it would score really well, but no one's going to counterpick it because it's too random and un- unknown of an indie. And that motherfucker yeah. killed me with that shit. So he's, he's probably going to get a goose egg on that, which is again, great for a counterpick. No, and which sure. means, no. which means you're going to get a goose egg. Um, yeah, I know. Trust me. I've been factoring that goose egg in all along yeah. with my outlook of my own sc- score. So trust me, don't worry about that. Um, um, so you also have two other games of- that that were counterpicked on your list, which means you can't drop them. Three games, uh, but, yeah, two other. But like, but Exo Primal is out now. What is that? No, re- no reviews. Where the fuck? Yeah, I mean, but that's because I- they sent they sent code, code late and it's an online only game. I mean, yeah, they're not going to rush out reviews so, for that. I was really hoping but that by the time we got, I was really hoping by the time we got to the recording tonight, we would know. Gravity Circuit, Exo Primal, and uh, uh, oh my God, Oxen Free. We know Oxen Free, which is great, but Exo Primal, Gravity Circuit, still I no think reviews. Exo Primal comes out tomorrow, actually, Nick. Yeah, it comes out tomorrow. Oh. I found a couple of like uh, YouTube reviews for Exo Primal, like, yeah. random people, not not actual like critics, uh, like us. How, how are those random. randos? Yeah. <laughs> and people seem to like it. People seem to think it's pretty cool. Yeah, but, but look, look, it, it's not... not gonna it's not gonna do numbers, right? Like like. Even getting into the eighties, that means it's got to get like lots of nines. You know, it's like come on, yeah. come on. Like I, I could see, the, I could see Exo Primal getting way more sevens than nines. Am, am I crazy with that? Uh, I mean, here's well, the thing: it's so. a sixty dollar like horde mode game at best, and then a versus multiplayer with dinosaurs. With di- it, ugh, I don't know. Okay, here's the like, thing. Here's the thing. The dream uh, is that hey. People start saying this is like science fiction monster hunter, and then all of a sudden the scores shoot up five points, ten points. You know, you made a good point so in Discord the other day though, because everybody loves to to slob all over Capcom's knob because they have a really great engine. They're they're yeah. kind of they're, you know they have all kinds of uh, W's over the past few years because of Monster Hunter, because yeah. of Resident Evil, yeah. and yeah. and I think Capcom's in her in gonna, and Dragon's Dogma and like people are really high on Capcom right now and. You know, and, and there's also probably to some extent people who are just like depressed that Dino Crisis is dead, and that are just being like, well, just give it, just give me something. They well, even did like a Regina it. tease in in fucking in this game, like that makes you that made me go, oh my god, is this a Dino Crisis game? Yeah. Uh, like, which is which is really a, a low blow. But I don't know. I think this could. I think there's a, this game could either be the, like one of the bigger underdogs of the year, or. It could just be a huge turd. I think. I think there's only the only two. I don't, I don't think it's going to be a turd at this point. I, people know enough about it to where it's not going to be like a turd. When I counterpicked it, I did it because I thought there was potential to gain points on this counterpick. Now that people have played more of the alpha or beta or whatever, like it, it's not going to be like a fucking redfall, right? It's right. not going to be a disaster, uh, but I still don't see it doing like numbers. I still see like high seventies is probably where it's going to end up. That, I mean, that's yeah. what I would bet money on. But even then, I, I was know. hoping for a worse. Because a game, a game like this scores low or doesn't do well if it doesn't have like, like a long term, like plan for its players. But reviews aren't going to reflect that. They're just going to talk about the game now. Like the, even if yeah, the experience the game is dead. But it, but if like microtransaction are, stuff is gross, you know. Evolved. But like, do, yeah. do, do people who are playing this, games like this for review really get like a really good picture of what like microtransactions, like what that situation is like in a game, especially if they're playing it like pre-release? Yeah. It is games as a servicey as hell, and it costs money, and that's already gonna like kind of rub rub people the wrong way, you know? It it, it all, it's all gonna come down to like how fun is it to play, and you know the engine's good, and that's gonna help, but it, it just looks. Who wanted this game? No one. Come on. I don't know, man, but that that's what makes it interesting. I, I'm just curious, Carlos, what was your inspiration for picking this game in the first place? He it was crazy. Cool. He, this sh- cool. he should have. It's new with Capcom, and then I played the beta, and I was like, dude, I fucked up. It, it's, but, your list is, is so... Chris Davis like liked it, it which uh, is also concerning. Y- yeah. <laughs> okay, that's, that's rude. <laughs> the what? He goes, Chris Davis liked it. That's also concerning. But like... <laughs> um. You know, I'm just. He's like every uh, dinosaur game ever. But like, mm-hmm. you, your list is very is fascinating, Carlos, because there's some really 
great picks here. And then you came I mean, in with something very surprising, like, like like Exoprimal. Nothing um, here is going to like overperform. I mean, nothing here is going to really like knock it out of the park, though. He's you know, you know like... how you've been saying, you know, but have you been saying that there's this like bias against indie games mm -hmm. and yeah. these scores? I feel like there's also like a bias going the other way for Valve games. So that's where I'm hoping Counter Strike Two is going to score pretty well. Do we do still think, think Counter Strike Two is coming this year? Patch, dude. Yeah, maybe. Who knows? I mean, they said it's summer, good. and that back. I mean, I was stand. I was actually standing right in front of Carlos when he won this <laughs> this bid no, no, and no. found out that it's, he got. It's it. too niche. Like, like, look, it's too niche, and you're going to have people who like think they know what Counter Strike is, or maybe they've dabbled in it that are going to review it, and they're going to be like, "Well, it's Counter Strike. The smoke is cool." I guess, and um, it's Counter Strike. I mean, it does, I, the last Counter Strike scored like low eighties. It'll be fine, but it's still Counter Strike. I still think it's a big deal, and I think the scores are going to reflect people feeling that it's a big deal. I mean, it certainly yeah. it's the announcement made a big splash, so it certainly seems to be setting itself up for for it's making. It's not going to score place. poorly. That's yeah. I mean, it's, so you don't have to worry about that. But you got um, four empty spaces, and that's a lot of like question marks. So it's it's kind of hard to, to see where you're going to shake out franchises, right? Like I can't pick any new any more. Um... Uh, yeah. So oh, so you haven't filled your you haven't filled your slot. Oh, I just your need one more. So you just need one more new franchise. So uh, for those at home, the, as, as part of the initial it. draft, the rule is everybody had to pick at least two games that were not sequels. So everybody has to take a chance on at least two new IPs. Um, and it looks like yours. Exo Primal Routine. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, actually, well, Exo Primal and Routine are both been, the same argument that you've been using to convince me or to like talk me down from the ledge about Silk Song not releasing. It could be applied to Routine as well because it was also featured in that same Microsoft event where they said every game that you see here will be out. This was year. it? Was that uh, one of those games? I mean, was it one of those? Though? It was one I of those. I remember. I mean, at this point, That's I'm taking Carlos's word for it, but list. I. I'm not. Uh, I'm not stupid. I wouldn't have put the game on my list if I had. If it hadn't been on that event. I'm gonna be honest, Carlos. I picked Routine because I didn't think there was any chance in hell it was coming out. Obviously, um, but if it does, Even one. If it does. If it does, I just want to say I think that game looks pretty fucking awesome. <laughs> I, so yeah. I'm pretty excited for that game. I hope. I mean, like the like the 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 silver lining for me is if it comes out and I end up I'm, I, and I lose points, like that game looks like my jam all the way. Yeah, so. game was announced it's in 2013. Yeah, yeah. but like it does. But the game they had, that they re-revealed last year was does not look like the game it looks that they the exact same. It's yeah, it the exact the same. same thing. It does. Yeah. That's what routine looked like, but like it doesn't matter. Mm. I've seen first-person horror games that with nice graphics. Like score middling all the time. That happens all the time. Those games that you love, Nick, they don't score that well. Uh, I do love like, Okay, well, I don't think he's referring to blue routine games. I think he's referring to more like Visage and like those al games along those lines, which Visage I do admittedly and the love. Mortuary's Assistant and even Amnesia. Like, like for first person horror games, don't really score that well. Even like the ones from. I mean, whatever. Let's, You're right. Let's All right. Uh, the last game we haven't really mentioned on your list, though, is Blasphemous 2, oh. which you, 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 oh, you yeah, picked that up. Oh, yeah, that's a good pickup. Yeah, that game's I think that that's a good pickup. Be... I thought you were crazy to bid on that so early when we knew nothing about it. No. I mean, we knew it was more Blasphemous, and for those of us who have played Blasphemous, Blasphemous, I think it's pretty great. Has bad reviews because at launch, it wasn't as polished and as good as the current, as the current game is, as the current yeah. Bla first Blasphemous. Yeah. Yeah. So, like, the second one, mm -hmm. they're going to put all of this stuff that they added to the game and all the stuff that they learned from the get-go. You're, right. you're so right. you're going right. to review better than the first game did. And the insta-kill spikes are gone, which is already going to help help it score an extra five fucking points because right. it, that was a choice. And that's coming um, out in August, right? This was a good pickup. But but when you bid on it, there I don't even think there was a second of gameplay footage. You it know? was just so, like... So, yeah. They, so they just tweeted like the number two on their account. Yeah, yeah. that was <laughs> that was crazy. But it does look good. But then I go back to like you know, Tunic is an eighty-five, and we'll oh, that makes that, that hurts my fucking soul. Yeah, that, that's years. another game that should be in the nineties for sure. Absolutely, exactly. This is why I hate indies. Mm -hmm. God damn it! When, <laughs> no, when, okay. when, I, when I when I said I thought 
Dave the Diver was going to do numbers. I just thought it was going to be in like the top half of the 80s. I didn't even think it was going to be as high as it did. I I, I didn't I didn't even think it was going to go that high, Brad. I thought like 82, 83 was what I thought. Um, Yeah. And so many end up. Man, it's way better than that, though. It is good. All right. As as salty as I am about not picking it up, I'm not mad because the game's great. I think that's kind of the. This has been kind of a great year to like try this for the first time because, like, you know, even, admittedly, I've had some. I've had. I've. I've. I've been on the ledge a few times with, (laughs) with this things. I keep my list was not going well for a while, and you know, arguably still might not be. But like, man. We're eating very good right now in terms of video games. There's so much to play and so much yeah. like really good shit well, to play. Well, speaking so. of, well, let's go up to Nolan, back up to Nolan. Yeah, first. yeah. Let's let's, do, let's switch to Nolan here. Uh, so Nolan uh, infamously got the first draft pick of the night uh, back in January and uh, just fucking just fucking scooped up Tears of the Kingdom. Overperformer. Um, speaking oh, of fuck overperformers. Off. <laughs> No, no. Look, it lived up. It it earned that score because that game is like one of the best games I've ever played in my life. But, but, but I don't think anyone expected it to be a 96. We were thinking like, oh, it's more Breath of the Wild, which is great, but it'll probably be like a 93, 94, maybe 95. Which is still really high. <laughs> but it will, yeah. he no, picked up 32 right. <laughs> points alone on Tears of the Kingdom, mm-hmm. which congratulations, Nolan. That's don't fucking, congratulate, congratulate Nintendo, I mean, I think maybe Miyamoto, even though he's not worked on a game in forever. Um, he was the oh, first pick. Oh, quick aside, I just it was so, a great so, first pick. So let me I just know. tell you. So you I saw know how a league the other day that the first person didn't draft that. What? <laughs> what did they draft? It was like Mortal fucking, Kombat uh, One. It was like spy, it was like a Jedi Survivor or something. I'm like, oh, this dude's an idiot. My oh, the only explanation I can imagine for that is being they completely forgot it was coming out that year or something. Um, which you know, I don't know how you missed that, but whatever. Uh, just quick aside about Zelda. So uh, Robin has she went last weekend. I think it was last weekend. Maybe it was the weekend, I don't know. She went last weekend and picked up her own copy of Zelda because she wanted to play it. She's been watching me play it, and. Uh, so she's been going like really hard at that. She's and re- remember, look when she gets really involved in these games like like Elden Ring, she goes hard. Like she lapped me on Elden Ring. She played like two hundred hours of it. She went through all three Dark Souls games in about like two months. Like she went hard, and now she's now she's playing Tears of the Kingdom. And I just found out tonight. She looked me dead in the eye, and she goes, "Can now and keep in mind, she's played probably closing in like 40, 50 hours, something like that." And she goes. I just realized I've been playing this game this whole time without fusing weapons. Yeah. And oh I was like, <laughs> that was, I was like, are you kidding me? She's like, it's so much easier now that I'm, now that I'm using. There's a lot, dude. There's shit that I haven't been doing that. I just started doing like this week that I'm like too embarrassed to even tell. <laughs> Which is great. It's also, also she's, she's, she's adopted a strategy that maybe I'm wrong. I haven't seen anybody else or that. I don't know anybody else who's, who has taken this strategy, but her, she started that game, and she went. She made a beeline for all the temples. Like she beat like the oh. fourth. She beat the fourth hmm. temple, and she already has. She only has like eight hearts. So like, wow. but I was like, I, I was it's like, a good way I, to get hearts. I was like, are you just trying to like, like mainline the game and be done with it? She's like, no. She wants to get all like the special abilities, like the the little. Uh, uh, you know that you get from doing all the temples, yeah. and then yeah, and then sure. and then go back and do all the side stuff in the world, knowing that she can kind of go yeah. anywhere and do anything. And I'm like, yeah. that's interesting. On the opposite end of that, everybody's like doing one or two temples for every like 20, 30 hours of gameplay <laughs> that I've seen. Yeah, I'm like uh, sixty five hours. I've still just done the two temples, and I did yeah. them recently. Yeah, but man, it's man. it's just it's just wild. Like it's, it's I had just, such a crazy moment like the other day. I mean, I've been playing this game constantly, and every time I play it, I'm just like, other games are so lame. Bad. Other games suck. <laughs> other games games, are, games are bad. Other develop game developers are bad. Tim Schafer is bad. I, what I got out of Double Fine Psych Odyssey is that they're bad. Because Tears of the Kingdom is so much better. All right, reining it back in a little bit. We're on Nolan's list. So, uh, Nolan, you also picked up Like a Dragon Ish- Ishin, <sighs> which pulled in 11 wait, wait, points. Wait. Okay, I, th- I thought we were kind of like more talking Nolan, more give about us the thumbs future. up or thumbs down. I, I, I know, I know, we haven't talked to Carlos. About what I know we haven't talked to Carlos about. much, but 
I think we should focus more on the future. Right? I do. I just want to recap what he what's what's already on the oh, board sorry. real quick. So well, yeah, you got, let's just not spend so much time on each game. We'll yeah, yeah. Uh, rapid fire go over them. Fiat Rhythm Final Bar Line got tw- sixteen points there. That was a good one. Uh, Planet of Lana eleven points. Uh, Wo Long Fallen Dynasty also eleven points. Uh, Wild Hearts nine points. Uh, Have a nice death ten points. Advance Wars one plus one and two eleven points. Um, and then you also counterpicked Hogwarts Legacies, where you lost 14 points there. And that's and then you, but what you what you still have on your list that hasn't dropped yet, because a lot of the stuff on your list has come out. Oh you, you my have God. you have fucking Pikmin Four, which comes oh out at the God, end of this that, month. Dude, the buzz is so good with this. I mean, like I I finally played the demo, and dude. it's like they finally made Pikmin like user friendly. And the uh, do you know what I found out? There's an unlockable mode in the game where. You play as Olimar, and it's just Pikmin One. You can play a Pikmin One mode in Pikmin Four as Olimar. You have thirty days to get your ship parts or whatever. And I'm like, they just put Pikmin One in this. It's gonna that's do wild. Numbers. It was a good pickup, and also you draft. Well, it wasn't a pickup. You drafted wow. this, yeah. Mm-hmm. Which you yeah, know, no, I. No. It, 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 hold on, but yeah. That, that being said, wasn't like. 30 other games were picked before I picked uh-huh. Pikmin 4. So all you I completely like, I completely like, forgot this was coming out this year or that it was I, expected I was, to come out this so year. so little about it. We knew I, it, so it doesn't little. matter. It doesn't matter. It's a Pikmin game, Brad. They're all good. I know. No, 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 no. I was never worried about the score. I was just like, they showed like a screenshot. And I'm like, you know, I th- this I game was already showed legend- like a small, like a small bit of footage, I thought, by that time. Or am mm-hmm. I wrong? I don't remember where we stood. Right, we didn't really get a very not talked about. We didn't get a really good look at it until after the, our draft. Um, but we did know about it. If, I think, like I, I think I think King Carey was right. He was saying chat was talking about Pikmin, and I was like, Dude, shut the fuck up, shut the fuck up, stop oh. Pikmin, because I was worried someone else was going to see that and be like, oh yeah, Pikmin, let me choose that because I, I had my list I going. I I totally would have if I had noticed that when we were recording. Um, yeah. Because Pikmin's just like, here's the thing about Pikmin Four too. Like that's the game that I when I think of Pikmin Four, I just remember like we've heard about that game in some form for like six years or something yeah. crazy, and it's, it's just like while, yeah. like a lot of there people say that it's been stuff, finished though. for years, and they just have they've been holding on to it. I was surprised to get the Dead Space remake at fourth, and I was like in position five. Yeah, so that was kind of shocking. As right, well. Hold on, let's, let's, you're, let's, you're let's, right. Let's let's yeah, let's yeah. finish the stuff and then the future. The Plucky so Squire. Just do we have a do we have a date for that yet? I don't think so. Anticipated Plucky Squire. We don't have a date. I thought nope. we did have. A... I don't think we have a date. I, I'm not I, sure. Maybe somebody in chat can can look that up, verify for it. I'm pretty sure Plucky Squire just has kind of like a fall or winter 2023 release window. Um, but it but, looks like if, it looks if, fucking. If it, crazy. if it does say this year, then they'll announce a delay. That that's important. Yeah, and I, I feel like we've seen it enough to where they probably threw a year on it at least. Uh, um, Bomber well, Cyberfunk is supposed to be out pretty soon, right? August, mm-hmm. I think. Yep, mm-hmm. and that that's like a spiritual successor to Jet Set Radio, right? From Correct. The crea- yeah, from the creators help- assisting with that. That, look, that looks um, pretty cool. Gamer Beck says, I mean, uh, "Plucky Squire says 2023, just the year." Um, the but- people who like Jet Set really like Jet Set, and it's definitely mm-hmm. got the look and vibes. It seems like anytime they show the game, people are happy. But we'll see. I mean. I mean, I think that's probably the biggest unknown. No, for sure, for sure. That's Uh, what I've kind of gone back and forth on, on if I'm worried about it. uh, Well, if that's all you have to worry about, no one, you're in a pretty (laughs) pretty good place. You still have your unconditional drop? Yes. Yeah, I've not dropped anything, so I have kind of gone back and forth on it. Uh, You also have Rift of the Necrodancer, which we know your history Mm -hmm. with... with, uh, Well, I think it looks great. Because it's, 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 it's doing like... Like people fucking love Punch Out, and they've been begging for Punch Out to come out. It, this is part Punch Out, and it's part Rhythm Heaven, and people love Rhythm Heaven. <laughs> so, yep. so, and then it's part like um, music game, right? But I'm saying right. like they are definitely dialing into things that people like truly adore, and I think it's gonna. It just looks nice. It looks really polished. That is supposed to come out. That is a date, right? Or a... uh, that I don't know. I think I think, I, I think to it chat. Might have a date. To Th- chat. This, this was one that I, I I had on my short list since the beginning of the year. As but you know, I, I, you know these are the indies that I was just waiting on, waiting for dates, waiting for till later in the year. 
Speaking of the indie shortlist, the, perhaps my biggest Cocoon. upset outside of Redfall this year for me has been Nolan Maybe. sniping Cocoon from me. I've had that on my shortlist of indies that I've been kind of waiting for all year. Wait, wait, wait. And I got he really sniped. excited. How much did you put up for that? I, yeah, here's the thing. Here's the thing. Again, this is our first time doing this. I'm still kind of learning like what's a reasonable amount to bid on something, especially if you're excited about it. I've been very uncomfortable with the idea, at least for a while. Very early on, I was kind of uncomfortable with the idea of like spending money because I'm worried I'm going to run out. Yeah. I should have gone hard on this. I should have go I should have spent like he spent like eighteen dollars or something. And I, I put like twelve or ten or twelve or something like that. And I thought I had it. I thought I had it locked and uh, I didn't say anything about the game. I was trying to be quiet about it. And then but I was like, but no one no one's dialed into this shit. This looks like a Nolan ass game. He knows. Well, we've been, all been he, we've all been excited. When it was first announced, I know so, we've I mean, we I all were. I, we were, we watched this game together be re- revealed back in one of those yeah, uh, press right. conferences game and I remember we were all game. going, This looks crazy. Um, and mm. I should I should have I shouldn't have underestimated Nolan's keeping his finger on the pulse of, of indie puzzle games. Well, but yeah, Cocoon I mean, I- was, I don't like think a fantastic you, you, game. you could have predicted this. I don't think you should feel bad about this because Nolan definitely seemed like he was kind of slow playing his bankroll like I was. So this was but, like the, his first time where he's like, you know what? I'm just going to spend some money. I so had a feeling in my heart. One I spent a, a decent amount on. For sure. I had a feeling in my heart that the only person I needed to worry about with Cocoon was Nolan. I w- and, and I just underestimated yeah, I how know. much money he was going to spend on it. Um and I think, well, so hold on. So that, but that's coming off of me getting sniped on the unannounced 2D Mario platform. Yeah. That's platform. Oh, you were so. I'm so glad you didn't get that. I'm so glad I wanted that one, and I think Crispy only put like a few more dollars than me. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so yeah, that's well, one of the ones that I. On those. But yeah, that's what keeps sure. this shit interesting. Um, and and that's but, kind but, of. But, but, oh, go ahead. Well, ultimately, though, no one still has the most money with one spot left. Mm-hmm. So. I can't no, wait to see what the, I can't wait to see what oh that spot God. ends up being. If, if, the, just that, if, the, if the Red Dead thing is real and they call it remake, oh my God, we're all so fucked. <laughs> because why would that score anything less than like a ninety whatever, right? It's You're right. just hey, Red Dead, but prettier. That's why it's gonna be like Metroid this Prime. Long. That's why I've left a slot so long. I'm like, you know what? That's, There's gonna be something that gets announced at the end so of the year. That's so random, year. though. the The reason I finally spent all my money is because I'm like, there's probably not gonna be anything big that gets announced and comes out. But Rockstar, you know, who could have predicted? So no one again sitting at 97 points. That's that yeah. kind of sums up his list 96. so far. Update your shit, dude. Oh, 96. Sorry, my, I'm going off of my master list, and and which is it's so not, weird. I know, but it's fine. You've talked about it. It's just easier for me, man. I, it lives in Google Docs. It's just easier for me. Um, all right. So from here, uh, uh, you want to do my list? Oh, God. What? You're next? I mean, no, I, guess, I guess not in my list. Not on my doc. No. <laughs> but, right. yeah, no, no, no. So I'm sitting. I, I am the. I am in I am last place right now. I have 15 points There's on no the board. There's no places yet. No I know. Places. I know. But I'm also looking at my list and trying to figure out where I stand. And, and one thing that I – that I was so I really took some hits, right? So I have the I have the fewest games that have launched so far. Um, of those games that have launched, I know, but of the games that have come out, uh, Redfall obviously was bad. I lost eleven points alone on Redfall, and I'm still bitter about it. Um, but nobody, I mean, it's, yeah, it's less less points than what Nolan lost on Hogwarts, or that Chris yeah. is going to lose on MK, or you know that. Right, that, but uh, which yeah. brings me to my next point, which which is, and and I, I know a lot of people don't really understand why I'm so upset about this, but Final Fantasy 16 has been was my number one draft pick. It was the it was the game I was betting the most. I know you're rolling your eyes at me, Brad. I was betting yeah, the most because yeah. I I have a, I had a lot of faith in this. I was very very excited for it. I'm a huge Final Fantasy fan. I was ready. This was the game I had. I picked this first for a reason, and it got an 89. So it has it pulled in 19 points, dug me out of a hole, which. I'm grateful for it in that regard, but say, Nick, this game did not underperform. This game ended up probably right where I would have expected at the beginning of the year when we did our draft. If anyone made a mistake, it was you drafting this in position two. You position should have one. gone for the Resident Evil remake. No, no, you're right. No, you're right. Going second. Yeah, that's, okay, that's here. I think it ended up where we should have expected it. Um. I don't know. I here's the thing. This was the Final Fantasy 14 team. Everybody is, you know, just can't stop filleting Final You're Fantasy right. 14. I put a, I put my faith in what the people were saying, and it it 
did 89, which obviously is a great score, but I was this was the game that I was kind of like, this is the one, this is like the one game on my list that I'm confident will like break into the 90s. Even if it's like a 91 or something, I was like, this is the one that I'll pick up a couple See, du- like dual points on. And, and that's just difference, you know, that's just kind of where I was coming I, from. I don't know if and I still it, have y'all's like like draft short list or whatever, but I had, I had, if I was first, I would have done Zelda. Second, would have I would have done Resident Evil. Third, I would have honestly probably done Baldur's Gate like I ended up doing or Silk Song. Like I probably would have done Final Fantasy 16 if I was in position 5 or 6 and it was still available. I, in fact, I probably would have done Street Fighter 6 over Final Fantasy 16. But whatever. All it's right. a good pickup and it did good numbers, so you can't be mad at that. Be mad at other things. Okay, look, 16. look. I'm just Cause 16 a- as far as based on what I've played, it overperformed. No, dude. I- I don't know if you've been paying attention. I started very, very high in this game, and I have I've gotten to the point now where I feel like I, I'm going to finish it because I I don't want to feel like I threw away 30 hours. Like I am so frustrated with this game at this point because it is just the biggest slog I've, of the year for me so far. So I am really... I have kind of turned on Final Fantasy 16, which is really disappointing. Um, but that's not really related to the fan security. That's just because now I'm playing it, and I'm bummed about it. Um, I picked up Hogwarts. So here's the thing. Yeah, it cancels out the Hogwarts. Cancels out so, Hogwarts doing as well as it did. So here's the thing. Absolutely. Here's the thing. I, I this is my first time doing any kind of fantasy thing, right? So I'm learning a lot about strategy and what's you know the right way to do this and that kind of I thing. Think we so all are. yeah, you're right. But, but like, so like right out of the gate, right? Right out of the gate. Uh, I got really excited about what we were doing, right? And I was like, I'm gonna die. like, ooh, Forspoken is getting some early positive buzz, right? And I I made a mistake and I bid on that and and snagged it and I ended up losing three points on it um, because I just I was like excited and I was like, yeah, I wanna I wanna get on this, I wanna start this bidding train. This is fun, right? So I got a little got a little overzealous. Uh, so that was a mistake and that sucks. Um, I also took a lot of chances on things like Silent Hill 2, which may not come out this year, and Stalker 2, which is definitely not coming out this year, especially because of what's going on in, in, in Ukraine. Um, but I'm just waiting on those studios to give us confirmation. I am I am hopeful that Silent Hill 2 gets a release date update, either, an, either a release date for this year or an announcement of a delay at Gamescom. Because Gamescom seems like a really prime place for them to just kind of re-talk about the game. So... I, I'm I'm waiting to see what happens there in August. Stalker Two is just a matter of time. Like that, there's no way in hell that's going to drop this year. Right now, I think it's supposed to, it's slated for like December, and I was like, it's going to slip. I'm just waiting for confirmation, so I'll be able to drop those two. Alan Wake Two was my fourth pick, and I'm still very very confident in Alan Wake Two. I know there's some debate there. Not as it's, confident as Nightshader, though, man. I mean, here's the thing. I, I, I'm being realistic. I, like if if. If Alan Wake comes out and gets an 89, I will not feel the same way about as I do about Final Fantasy 16. Like 89, it was a fourth round glorious. Pick. Um, but like I've historically speak historically loved all of Remedy's games, and I think Alan Wake 2 looks kind of like a banger. Like it's got a it's got two protagonists, and one of them has a mind palace, and that sounds awesome. If this game is a survival horror game and a detective game, and like. And a sequel to one of my favorite games of all time. Oh my god! I, I'm I'm super Nico. hyped. What? Both Alan Wake one. I know. And I know. Or eighty threes. First of all, Fuck. Alan. First of all, you're talking about Alan Wake, which came out in 2010. So, re- Open Critic didn't even exist in 2010. Then we got the remaster, no, which Metacritic. is literally just a, a re. Oh, okay. Sorry. Whatever. We'll, I looked at Metacritic. Th- we're not. This doesn't use Metacritic. Metacritic skews a little bit lower than Open Critic, I think. Typically, yeah, it does. Sometimes. Um. The point is, I, I I picked with my heart on a lot of these choices, right? And I'm gonna do the same thing going forward, but I'm gonna try and be a little smarter about it and be, uh, you know, pick things that are maybe safer that I still am very very interested in playing. Um, Time play- Cop. What's that game called? Time Cop. Quantum, Quantum Break. Break. Mm. Don't look at Qu- Quantum Break. Is their wor- is their their lowest scoring game? And I loved it, but. I don't think this is indicative of, of Quantum Break, dude. That, that was a very experimental, I'm not like... I'm saying it's going to score like Quantum Break. I was just curious about their... Their highest scoring game was like Max Payne, right? You know, it's been a while. But they've they've also come a long way as a studio. And I th- honestly, everything they've shown of Alan Wake 2, to me, seems like has been just what I want to hear. Right. What I want to see. What I want to hear. I think it looks great. Um, I'm not going to play it, apparently. <laughs> 
Oh, because of are, are one of y'all gonna buy it on Steam? Because I can't. There's no physical version. No, no I, I would. Steam. That's not. I already. I'm gonna buy. I already bought it on PS5. So that's yeah. Sorry. Um, Can I borrow some? I I also uh, picked up Ask replaced. Replaced, which is a game that I I think still looks uh, phenomenal, but I, you. they've been quiet, and they're twi- like uh, all they do on Twitter is retweet other people's indie games, so it's like uh, it doesn't tell me anything. So like I'm kind of waiting for them to talk, maybe announce a delay. But that half a year, you still that game's being de- that game's being developed in Europe, and Less I'm one, and I'm wondering if maybe they'll say something about it at Gamescom. So yeah, fingers crossed. Um, but after that, that, the last uh, light coming out, or what was that game called? The, the other replaced oh. looking game that has amazing pixels. Oh, I think that game. I, I think that game fizzled and died because the, the creator was a, a terrible person, and I think I think he got shamed off the person. internet. That doesn't I, stop game development. I don't know. I mean, I don't, we'd never heard anything else about that game after the controversy, and you know, maybe that's for the best. Um, Replace, if you haven't seen it, looks pretty fucking slick though. Um, whatever that is, it looks good. Yeah, whatever it is, it looks good. Uh, my counter picks were Routine and Atomic Heart, which I picked Great. against my this is my heart. Puts you in it. I a knew I knew Atomic Heart was probably going to be uh, a, a, not going to pull in a lot of points, right? But I picked it, uh, and, and that's why I picked it. But I also picked it knowing that like this game looks like it's my jam all the way, and it absolutely was. Um, but I think I. It, it, when it comes to counter picks, I'm pretty proud of my picks. Um, but I picked what up three is... games. I picked up three games. Oh. Oh, uh, J- Jusant, which is that new Jusant. Don't Nod game, which looks like Jusant. which looks kind of like Eco, where you're climbing that huge tower. Uh, yeah. I played the demo for it. I thought it looked really great. Um, I don't think that's going to be a huge nod. points game, but like it's probably going to be like mm-hmm. an 80, 82, or something. You know, whatever. I picked up Nine Souls, which I think looks really, really good. But that's Red Candle, and they've been. They had to delay the game into winter 2023, and I haven't said anything about it since. Uh-oh. And then I picked up the Talos Principle 2, which they seem very confident is coming out this year, and I think that's going to be... That's yeah. going to pull in points. I think that's going to do really well. And then I have two empty slots. Probably, yeah. So You have more than two empty slots, but yeah. Yeah, I, yeah. No, realistically speaking, I could start bidding on more things right now knowing that there's probably two or three more going to open up. But, you know, we'll see, about, we'll see what happens. All right. Brad. Oh, Chrissy D. Oh, you want to do like the two Chris's since they're not here? We can just kind of rattle. Uh, just through. real b- briefly. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I would say with, with Chris with with Chris Davis, I mean, he's done with his list. He's got some that kind of underperformed a little bit. I don't think he has much left that's going to do anything like crazy in terms of like, there's no 90s here, you know? Yeah, but, he's, but he's got he Sea of Stars, Assassin's Creed Mirage, a, and Shadow Gambit. I mean, none of those no, but, are like... Yeah. I mean, I don't think they're yeah. going to... He's got Mortal Kombat 1. Don't forget about that. <laughs> no, I know, I know, I know. City Skylines is good. Like, the stuff he has, though, is really strong. If Tekken... Oh, God, Chris out, is here. <laughs> Chris Davis is in chat. Ha- everything in Viewfinder has been sort of, like, talked up indie darling. Now, because, like, I don't know if... You, have you all played the demo? Yes, It's I on have. PS5. I've it played. is, like, fucking nutty. And, and, I, and I think it might push it beyond into the territory of, like fucking whoa um but we'll see the writing that comes out like next week too suspect. so we're gonna find out here pretty soon about viewfinder shadow gambit's g- probably gonna do well skyline's gonna do well assassin's creed might be okay like a dragon's gonna do well like everything here is like 80s mid 80s maybe even high 80s honestly but he counterpicked armor core which i don't think was a bad counterpick at the time but it is mm-hmm. probably a little now um so i don't know like i think chris davis is like He's going to have to drop list. Tekken 8, though, right? Like, there's no way that's coming no, out this year. No, 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 no. No, it, it absolutely might. Really? Okay. They've shown so much of that game. But, but like, the, the developer has been very, like, don't... Like, they've been strongly hinting to, like, not expect it this year. And the and the FGC kind of doesn't really expect it this year. But if it does drop, I mean, that game's going to do great. Um, but, so, I don't know. I don't feel like a... Chris Davis is going gonna, is gonna to be the kind of person who ends up maybe like second place right at best right i, I don't know I, I just don't see the second place is higher I mean, than i thought yeah, you would have placed a him. chance yeah no no because like the games that are left are good and he doesn't have any massive l's um man yeah that armor core counter pick i don't think he's winning this thing but we'll see 
All right. I, I, I think games like Sea of Stars are going to be are going to overperform. Are, I'm very score ex- better than they deserve. I'm very excited for Sea of Stars. Even yes. after playing that demo, I think that demo was great. But yeah, that's it, just it'll me. score better than it deserves. Uh, all right, crispy. Oh, and then uh, crispy's list. Crispy has his his list had looked really good after the draft. He got some L's, but then he also picked up the 2D Mario game. And it's like fuck, mm-hmm. yeah, you know. So son of a but, bitch. And, and then Mortal Kombat got released, right? And who knows about the Expanse? Announced. I think yeah. a lot a, a lot lies on whether Space Marine Two comes out. If Space Marine Two comes out, I don't know if his chances of like getting n- number one are the best. But if it does come out and it scores like a high seventies, like he's he's got he's, he's got he's two more picks. He's got Isn't Forza and him, wait, Fucking Sagan. Forza, hmm? man. Oh, he 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 counterpicked Mortal Kombat. Yeah, it's, it's gonna be close. I mean, he's another person that I could see getting like maybe end up getting second or something. He's got Forza and I mean, Super Mario Bros. Wonder, um, and uh, yeah, all, don't and but, also but see, don't discount. See, I, I think Forza is like a high eighties at best. I, I mean, that's not really? score in nineties. Yeah, because really it's like, not. Forza has not been in the 90s. Forza Motorsport has not been in the 90s since the 360. Um, and it has been in the 70s since. So, I mean, yeah, it's it's not Forza like, Horizons. Like, like, no, it's not Forza Horizon. That's the thing. But I could still think it could yeah. easily do like high 80s. Um, but I mean, it might but end he... up shaking out to be mid 80s. Because like they talked about this game, but they've not announced anything like revolutionary or like what it's just another Forza Motorsport game. Hell, they didn't even seem to have much faith in it at their big press conference. Like we were betting on how much time they were going to spend talking about Forza because it's always they like 10 minutes. Up, just... And they showed a three minute trailer and moved on. So yeah, I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know. I, I don't see the 90s is all I'm saying. And at that point, what does he have left? I mean, I don't think he also has two slots left as well as he thinks. Yeah, he has two slots left. But I mean, what's left to, to buy? Right. Hey, mean, you just, you're right? the one who just keep finished which saying the dice. You're the one who just finished saying like you sit on your money. They're going to announce stuff towards the end of the year. You're no, like, no, 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 no. But, but I'm saying like the chance of picking up like an, I'm talking about you, Nick, like oh, who, just who've me. Been a, who, who, no, who've, who've been a Debbie Downer. And then who, I'm like. Look, you you could still pick up a lot of gravity circuits and Dave the Divers and shit. I you just got to be smart with it. Um, but like, I don't think you're gonna see a lot of like '90s or anything. I'm just saying, like, don't count yourself out. I forgot to say this when I was talking about my list because I got distracted. But like, the the thing that's keeping me going at this point because I do feel obviously I'm I'm not in a good place points wise right now, and my list is is. What's exciting about it now to me is that I have to play it very strategically. And and my first my first strategic move that I made that I think is paying off, I think, is Gravity Circuit. I picked that up last week. We don't have oh, reviews for it yet, circuit. but it's but it seems like it's it like it might do good. Like it might do at least high like maybe mid to high 80s. I'm hoping maybe higher, but like who yes. the fuck knows? Think, who the fuck knows? Yeah. Um so I like I, I have a I have a list of games, kind of like what Carlos said. I have a list of games that I'm I that I'm eyeballing between now and the end of the year, and I'm gonna try and be very, very careful about how I. Bid Who's gonna going pick forward. up Lorelai and the Laser Eyes? You know, I've been eyeing that one for so long. What? Did that get a, what is a, that? A, a Lorelai and the Laser Eyes? And the laser Eyes. I can talk openly because my list is full. It's a fucking Samogo game, and they've never shipped think, something below an eighty. I think Brad's trying to give us in a trap. No, no. He's like, oh, totally. Look, I, can't, I can't. I'm so mad. I can't draft that game. Oh no. my god! It was on my shortlist from the. Samogos literally never shipped something below an eighty. Samogos okay. is the studio that did. Uh, um, oh my god! What's why can't I... Year Walk? Device Year Walk. Six, thank you. Uh, Sayonara, Wild Hearts. Like Brad, Brad's got sick. some insider trading. There's some some milkshake duck shit going on. <laughs> he he was... knows something. <laughs> He's trying uh, to get me to draft it. That's what he's doing. He's trying. I to could be like, see. Oh my god! No. You know what that feels like to me? That feels like a Carlos joint. Like that feels like maybe on Carlos's short list of games that he's like, I because he said he's got a list of games that he's like eyeballing. I've been eyeing it since January. <laughs> well, you didn't. You didn't bid um, on it. Your list is full. 
No, yeah, you're right. I, I, I was going for the safe pickup. So real quick, let's talk about my list. Let's um, talk about your list, Brad. You're sitting at 109 points. Right. Technically, you're in the lead, even though Nolan has Zelda. But you still have Baldur's yeah. Gate 3 I and Starfield. I have a lot of games out. I have a lot of games out. Um, yes. So, I mean, I think I think now, like with Dave the Diver, obviously, I'm in pretty good shape. The problem is y'all need to factor in that I think Ultra Kill is probably not going to ship and that it's counterpicked, so I can't do anything about it. Um, Exoprimal is yet to be seen, but Baldur's again, Gate, Baldur's Gate could end up being like buggy. I, I don't know. Like I could see that game easily ending up in the high eighties. Obviously, Divinity Original Sin two scored in in the low nineties, and it's like, but but that was a big like surprise. Like everyone was like, oh my god, you got to play our this game. Discord crazy, is crazy, filleting the shit out of Baldur's Gate three right and, now. <laughs> oh no, like don't get me wrong, people are hyped as fuck for this game and it's going to do well it's going to sell well and it's going to score well but um that doesn't mean it's going to end up in the high 90s just because original sin 2 is um you know like even like the steam reviews are not as positive as they are even though it's an early access it's still a lot lower than the even the early access was of the original sin games on steam um, in terms of user reviews because you have a lot of people who are like fuck you saint baldur's gate go fuck yourself you know, a lot of people are upset that it's turn-based combat instead of real-time with pause, which is what Baldur's Gate and the Infinity Engine games. But were. I don't think those. And, and, but what and matters here is the, the critics. Reviews of the, yeah, and then people are concerned about bugs. It, it, it seems like Larian really, really threw the kitchen sink into this game, and their experience with this sort of game. But they are doing a lot, and they really stepped up like production values versus their previous game, and I could see that leading to a lot of bugs. You know, so it might be a little scrappy, at least at launch. Uh, but, you know, I think it's going to be fine. Obviously. I will say this. I, I think my best chances are for this game to actually score in the 90s. And, of course, Starfield has to, like, I think also maybe do Brad, similarly. I'm good. sorry. I was thinking about this earlier while I was in the shower. I think Starfield's probably going to fall in the low 80s because of its console version that runs at 30 mm. frames per second, people are going to we'll give see. that most force as a statement. No, but, 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 it, it depends. It depends on the quality of the game. If the game is not, if the game is not, is middling or it's not amazing. Remember that, remember that Prey it, 4 from IGN? There's no, going to be a few of those. For but something. here's the thing. Here's the thing. If There's the already a precedent for this. Then people will be mad at that. There's a precedent if, for this. There's a precedent for like at this at this day and at this day and age, I've seen it happen a lot. Reviews where there's a PC and a console version, there's a big disparity between the quality in terms of like technical issues. I've seen the console issue, the console issues because it's almost always on the console side. Not all, not necessarily always, but a lot of times it's on the console side. It gets relegated to like a like like a like a blurb in the review. It's like a little box that's like separate from the review. It's like just so you know. It's got problems on console, but then they just, and then they go right back to filleting it on PC because th- you know it's better than I guess in their eyes than trying to review every single console because every, every shit comes out on everything these days. Thirty so. FPS does not matter because of the scope and the scale of the game. If it's a stable thirty, no one's going to give a shit. Now, if it if, 30, if if it runs like a train wreck on consoles, then yeah, it's going to affect scores, but. I think what's going to – the game itself has to, like, really surprise people in terms of its quality. And then people will, will, won't give a shit about 30. I mean, I like, think – No Je- one gives a shit about the frame rate in Tears of the Kingdom, right? Even though – But also it's a lot more stable than – hand, it, it, it hits, you know, 20 frames a second, right? But Tears of the Kingdom is a lot more stable than Breath of the Wild was. <laughs> I'll say that. Uh, no, I know, but but th- that's another good example. Breath of the Wild didn't run had a lot of frame rate issues, but no one gave a shit because the game was amazing. This the game has to be amazing for people not to care, but I th- think that potential is there. And I think that Bethesda Game Studios as a studio, Microsoft Xbox as a brand and a company and a recent purchaser of Bethesda really 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 needs this game to be good and amazing and this game should have came out a year ago and I think that it was it's in a, been in a similar situation as Tears of the Kingdom where they just took another year to make sure that this shit was more po- as polished as it's going to be and it's still going to have issues because it's a fucking Bethesda Game Studios games but we've been forgiving bugginess and like and like performance for them, for Bethesda Game Studios, since their inception, right? 
like because of the scope of the game because you can move every little object in the game and it remembers that and other games just aren't like that right so you we forgave them and they still scored really high um you know and it's gonna have to be a technical disaster i guess here, here's the thing I mean, yeah. technical aside do you think what this game is or what y'all think this game is is gonna make people happy i think it is i Let's absolutely say it think runs it is great I think this game. I, this game became my like one of my most anticipated games of the year after that showing. It's still a lot of shooting. I, I think right? here, here, here it is. Here is the thing, Brad. I think it is what No Man's Sky promised. Besides, obviously, the infinite stuff, but it's actually going to be that when it comes out. You know what I'm saying? Like No Man's Sky is now good. When it came, but out, it took him a long time to get there. Yeah, exactly. I think that when this comes out. It is going to be that. It is going to be a giant place you can explore. You can, like, build these stations and design them and decorate them and build ships and all this stuff. And I think it's, for the most part, going to work fairly well. Don't get me wrong. Yes, Bethesda games often are buggy. But generally, that's just like, oh, this person sat down weird, blah, blah, blah. Generally, the core mechanics overall are fairly solid. Also, I think it's going to perform very well. Do we think Game Pass might have an impact on the review scores for this game? The fact that like yeah, it, like it, it may be kind of like, maybe kind of a mess, but like the fact that you can play it for essentially like 7 or 8 bucks a month yeah, is Again, crazy. this is too big of a game. I think it's going to come down to the quality of the game alone. I don't think Game Pass affects scores honestly all that much. Maybe it's more likely to affect the score of something like Exo Primal, which is on Game Pass, right? Than something like this. Um, but so, I still think for my, my chance of winning means that I think this thing needs to score what Bethesda game studios games used to score, um, and not what people expect them to score. These I mean, days. the buzz after that showing at the Microsoft was positive. Thing was very positive. But the further I got away from it, the for, the more I realized, the more I thought about Baldur's Gate three, especially which I which I kind of started up and I've been looking a lot into, is. There are so many like interesting ways and ver- verbs. You know, there's so many things you can do when you're approaching like quest, quest design, world exploration, and that and like original sin in Baldur's Gate. Mm-hmm. It, and then I started thinking about Starfield again because you know they're they're pitted up against each other kind of, and it's like it's it's going to be shooting things, it's going to be collecting resources. I mean, you're going to be making ships, but I think there needs to be characters that people can't stop fucking talking about how awesome they are they're ne- in, like like the ship stuff needs to be like legitimately awesome and addictive like like it can't just be a shooting game with a lot of dialogue like it need it, it it has to charm people you know and yeah. you know what you know what has charmed people that fucking druid sex scene in Baldur's gate three yeah you know what didn't fucking charm people when adam jensen and the starfield thing says you know I really love you. It's like, what? That was terrible. There's nothing charming about that. So I don't know. We'll see. I mean, obviously, I'm ho- I'm hopeful. Obviously, um, all right. We yeah, still got more of your list to talk to about. Well. Obviously, those yeah, are the kind no, of the linchpins yeah, I mean, of your of your list so at, it, at this point. So what's left is is Mario RPG, which I think I think that's going to be a low to mid '80s. And there's Persona Five. I bet on that as well, which, which I think is going to be. Uh, uh, high seventies to to low eighties. Honestly, like yeah. here's you know what I've learned about Tatka, and I, I I knew this before I bid on it. This was just sort of like I needed one more safe thing, just so I wasn't gonna get fucked by an indie in the end. Um, so I I used the rest of my money on Tactica, but I knew at the time when I spent the money on it, and I very almost didn't pick it up, is that the Persona fans do not give a shit about this game it like at best and at worst they're like hostile towards it which oh, might shit. sound crazy and 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 overall people are super deinterested in, disinterested in this game is it there because persona 6 doesn't era. exist yet no 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 there are threads on era where like they're like one page two pages they released a full-on trailer gameplay trailer like talk through recently no one even made a thread about it on era which everything gets a fucking thread on era and i asked these motherfuckers i've gone into these threads and i'm like what the fuck is wrong with y'all and this is what they say they say this is like seriously 
all we care about is like the story and the characters <laughs> and every single one of these persona spinoffs are like dream sequences you know pocket dimensions multiverse things they're not canon they're not real stories and because of that persona fans don't give a shit they care about like the character development of the characters they love and the story development of the story they love and the spinoffs don't count and that is everything to these motherfuckers right two people don't love the chibi art style they want their persona characters yeah. to look like they do in the other persona games um the the fucking tactics games i feel like are always a little bit soft in general and three there's like this thing about the dlc they already announced dlc characters and their characters from like persona 5 royal royal and stuff and like people are really mad at, at atlas and the way they roll out dlc the fact that like there's characters that people again love and care about that aren't even going to be in the game you have to buy like a season pass and and people are already like mad about that they're like what the fuck why are these characters why are you selling me characters for a game that's not even out yet like people are mad they're disinterested but mm. if the game is good the game is good and you know if this is like the persona q team you know per the persona b team whatever like they make strong games and it's not like the persona q games scored poorly or a lot of the persona games were fine i mean like the dancing games end up in the 70s but like i've watched like some trailers some breakdowns it looks like cool to me it's a strategy rpg with like a lot of movement and stuff like there's a like verticality there's like knocking people off there's getting into position to set up your like triangle attacks like that's the kind of stuff i look for when i'm looking at a, ta a tactics game you know i've played like the devil uh survivor games which were the strategy rpgs on on the ds and the 3ds and those are like really boring like flat grid maps this actually has like some map design which is nice and i think the chibi hour style people are underestimating and there's voice acting and i think it could be fine it's not going to do crazy numbers like i said i think low 70 i mean high 70s to low 80s but i'm fine with it then the last right. thing is exoprimal which i counterpicked We're which again we'll soon. we'll probably by the time we record next week we'll have a we'll we'll know it where but, exoprimal but if stands. i lose eight points 10 points on this that sucks right because that means i've lost like a lot from my counter picks you know and, and, and you know i think nolan is at the most gonna lose 14 i think you're only gonna lose four i think um carlos is gonna lose on alan wake but i think he's not gonna lose on ultra kill you know chris davis is a little fucked with the armor core thing right <laughs> but it, it, and crispy i think is he'll do fine counter picking telltale but you know he's not great as well if Exo Primal over hits low 80s, then it's a definite overperformer. What if Exo Primal is the game better. of the year? 97. No, it's, it's just kidding. It's That's all, not going to happen. Like, like the, the thing is, when that when that game shows up at like presentations, people like fucking groan. <laughs> it's like, yeah, it's not like people are like happy about Exo Primal. Like if it's if it's good, it'll be a surprise, which probably hurts my chances of it getting a low score. Right. I don't I kind of don't want it to be like surprisingly good because then that's when stuff starts to score higher than it's worth. But we'll see. Yep. Uh, look, I'm that's, looking at Baldur's Gate. I'm looking at Starfield. I want those. Everybody two is. <laughs> everybody is. OK, so that's kind of where we stand right now on Fantasy Critics. So um, that's all really I wanted to talk about tonight. Uh, we'll continue to obviously give updates on these throughout the year. And I will say this. Um, like this is our first time doing this and I've said it a few times, but like when we start talking about doing this next year, we have ideas and thoughts and the community has started giving ideas and stuff and I like how we might mix things up and make things more exciting or make things more fair or, or involve the community in some way. So next year will be really interesting. Uh, we do have a pot. How big of a it's handicap are y'all going to give me? No handicap. We should do a but reverse fuck one yeah, where fuck we off. get the lowest score. We, we, we should, <laughs> That's should, funny. Look, man. Look, you made some good choices, but fuck you, Winzella. Okay. Yeah, I, I'm actually really excited about just the I, order of what next year is going to be like. If I, I so badly want Nolan to get first again, just because that would be so poetic. So, oh uh, just as as a quick recap, because uh, we do have a pot writing on this, because you know, this is the first time doing it. It's not a lot. It's fifty dollars per player, so we have a. Six no one's players. collected any of that money, by the way. No, no, no. It's three hundred. The winner gets three hundred dollars. The loser has to stream the worst game on their list, which right now is me oh, playing Redfall. No. Yes. Uh, but like, <laughs> oh, oh, oh! Did y'all? Did by the way, if I end up losing, for me, my lowest game was Storyteller for a long time, but it went up to seventy. 
And if if Ultra Kill doesn't ship, that's also a seventy. No, nope. I can just ship nope. Ultra Kill. Nope, no, nope. That's not how yeah. that works. That... What? What do you mean? Nope. I'm gonna. Either way, they're both good games. If I have to play Redfall, yeah, yeah. if I lose, you yeah, cannot. Get, you cannot. You cannot Redfall. pull some shit and play Ultra Kill in early access, which is an amazing game. All right. Um, so that's where we're going to end it tonight. We'll continue to give updates throughout the rest of the year. Um, and I hope y'all, I hope y'all enjoy these conversations because I know a lot of people are like, it's, you know, who cares about points really? And, but really this is just an excuse to talk about what these games are looking like and, and, and what are the outlook for the rest of the year is just in general. <laughs> what are you doing, Brad? Um, that was the Exo Primal trailer. I just looked up Steam cause it's out on Steam. We got 45 reviews, 48% mixed. Ooh, I think it just mixed. launched like 30 minutes ago, though. Oh, <laughs> so yeah, that's probably not... Probably a little early for reviews. Probably not super fair. Probably just, it probably just not booting up for some people, so so they're just like, fuck this game. Yeah. So, uh, anyways, thank you for listening, guys. We'll be back to our regular uh, you know, thing next week. We'll talk about games we're playing. We'll talk about news, all that jazz. Uh, I do want to wrap up with the four-player minute. Let's do quick final thoughts from everybody. I want to start with Carlos, because you know, haven't had you on in a while. I was ready to go first. Sorry, Brad. Fuck you. <laughs> Carlos, what would your final thought for the evening be? Final thought for the evening? I've been playing a lot of Neon White. That game's really good. Hell yeah. No disrespect. I'm surprised at Nick having so such good times in that game. <laughs> Hell yeah! I mean, <laughs> also, fuck you. Gamer, dude. You saw his tweet he's, about Devil I'm like, I'm like, dude, I'm trying to like beat Brad, and I still got like three or four people to beat before I can get to Nick's times. Fuck yeah! But no one, really, but no one I mean, has better times than I do on on Spotify. Yeah, Chef's kids. No one has are better we, times are, on all those than I do. <laughs> are we not friends on uh, Steam, Carlos? Are you, did you finish the game though? He might be further than you, you got. Because I did. I never finished it. Yeah, I don't think I've seen Nolan's uh, leaderboard scores. But see, the only... Nick, were you chasing like good? Yeah. Dying? Well, no, because I definitely beat. Nick on, on a bunch of those, but uh, I eventually stopped playing. I was chasing. I, there's a lot there, depending on. I would. I was going for like the best. Uh, I forgot how the trophy system. The best or medal. Yeah, yeah, I was yeah, going see, for that. Once I got the best medal, I never retried. Even though, even no, when I yeah, knew, absolutely. like I could probably approve this, but I got, I got the. the edge, yeah, no, no, so no, 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 yeah. I was going for the best medal, but like, but almost every time I got the best medal, there was still a Nolan score that was higher than mine, and I was just like, nah, fuck it. I got the best medal. I'm good the community he's his times are even more absurd than oh yeah no tack oh yeah you're just low on the list the higher you get like the crazier it gets there's people with red medals the developer time medals yeah um, that, that game is so good i i fucking love it's that it's fucking really game. good i recently got a physical announcement and like i just thought hmm. that the box art looked stupid I'm i like, thought it already stop. had a physical edition but whatever it's just it's just that why are you doing showing that character look you should be showing like the cool world design because wait which character are they showing no one cares about the story the main uh, character the main neon white one character and it's like this game could literally be anything with this cover that's that's fair uh anything else you want to say carlos before we move on just neon white's pretty dope Neon white's really good all right brad you're up What's your final thought? Uh, mine is I started listening to an audio book about Ooh. video games. Yeah. More specifically, it is a um oh geez, I'm trying to open Audible. My God. So um it's it's called Before We Go Live, Navigating mm-hmm. the Abusive World of Online Entertainment. Ooh, and that it's sounds a, like it's, a... fr- it's it's written by a Twitch streamer. Mm-hmm. Um, about kind of becoming talks- like a six. Yeah, just sort of all about kind of like the weird parts of like being a streamer and the abusiveness and like the the teams, professional teams that sort of take advantage of streamers and stuff. And mm-hmm, mm-hmm. it's like a really interesting book. But the reason I heard about it is because it was written by the guy that I've watched like literal hundreds of hours of play Slay the Spire. <laughs> my, this, my, my Slay the Spire like... That with the Excel uh, spreadsheet? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That guy, and he, he and he wrote a book about um, this, and it's it's narrated by the same dude who narrated like the Jason Schreier books, and he's I forget his name, mm, but he's a Wheaton. really good Ray Chase. He's a it's a really good like audio book, like it's just good. And I'm like, oh, and and you, 
as a streamer and you know even you viewers like a lot of the stuff is interesting and relatable because it's about uh you know this dude who's been living and making a career streaming so i recommend it i'm not i'm not done with it yet but it's not like a super long book i, I should be finishing up soon cool but it's called before we go live uh and i recommend it all right cool uh no one um I have my four play minutes just now. Um, my sweat. Um, too many games on my plate at the moment that I'm in the middle of uh, playing. Um, that's just how the cookie crumbles sometimes. I haven't finished any of them, but yet I've actually been dabbling in all of them. Uh, I, I've been you know, playing some Dave the Diver. I've been going back to Zelda. Uh, but the weird thing is, is for some reason, I don't know why, um, I recently got the urge um, to oh. play... Po- Pokemon Legends Arceus. What? I saw you out there, motherfucker. I was like, who's online? I bet they're playing Zelda. I was like, oh, it's Nolan. He's playing Zelda. He's like, wait. Wait, he's playing that Pokemon game again? I thought he finished that. And then I saw it was Arceus. And I'm like, this motherfucker. So You got so way he, more time in that than Tears of the Kingdom. Uh, probably. So, so here's the thing. Um, just a quick aside. Uh, I fell off Pokemon for a long time. I, I think in, before Arceus came out, I had not played a Pokemon game since 2014 or 2015. And it had been a while. Um, I just kind of got over it. I picked up Arceus when it came out because everyone's like, oh, it's so different. And I don't know. I played it, but I think I had stepped away from Pokemon for so long. I didn't really know any of the Pokemon. And I was just like, I was not up with it. Um, then I started playing Pokemon Go uh again uh me, me and bernadette you know going out with walking the dogs going to parks and playing and stuff like that and i've kind of re-familiarized myself with pokemon and i was like you know what i never finished or Ar- like i finished i think the main game itself but like i didn't really do a whole whole lot um and so i went back and picked it up and man like i've been having a good time going back to that game um and uh the the kind of hunting shinies a little bit uh, and having a fucking fun time doing it. And it's funny because I was playing the other day, uh, and I th- there's this thing uh, they, they called Mass Outbreaks in the game. Generally, I have a higher chance of finding shinies. Then they release some DLC called with Massive Mass Outbreaks, even a higher chance, whatever, blah, blah, blah. I wasn't really, like, hunting, hunting them, but I was like, hey, you know what? I'm just going to fly over them, and if I see a shiny, I'll jump down and catch it. So I'm, I'm playing the game. I'm flying over a mass outbreak i was actually trying to go fight a blissey because you can get a lot of experience from it whatever i was trying to grind one of my pokemon to level it up um i look down and a, a shiny shinx appears not even part of an outbreak and i was like oh sweet let me catch this shiny shinx i start continuing to fly towards this blissey uh a shiny zubat shows up i'm like what the fuck what is this luck uh catch that keep going look down and a shiny stantler shows up and i was like what the fuck within the span of five minutes I got three shinies. I think up to that point in the game, I only had six shinies Damn. Um, throughout my entire time. And like, yeah, yeah it is. Um, but uh, it, it, I was just like, so like fucking like jazzed. And now I'm like, I got to get more. I got to get fucking more. Oh no, the hook's uh, in. <laughs> yeah. So, so I, I've, I've been rest playing. in peace, Zelda. Like, it's like yeah. a yeah. 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 And then it never happens again. Yeah. Right. <laughs> What if you're um, colorblind and don't know it, and you just think they're all shinies? <laughs> so, so that would actually be a thing for uh, Scarlet and Violet because there's no actual audio cue when the shiny mm. are sent, like you just have to know what they look like, and then when you go into combat with them, then a little shiny thing shows up. But in Arceus, a little like noise, like a shiny like like sound happens, mm. and like a little sparkle comes off of them when they're just in the world. So it's actually a little bit easier in Arceus than in. Uh, uh, Scarlet and Violet. I would not be surprised if Scarlet and Violet if I just walked past a couple of shiny Pokemon because maybe I didn't know what they look like. Gotcha. Speaking of sounds, this is off topic, but it is the most important thing. Mm-hmm. I still get goosebumps when I'm going down into the depths in Tears of the Kingdom, and they play that fucking ho- that sound oh, when yeah. you first enter the when you enter the depths. Oh, I love it so much. I want to put that shit on my phone. I love that <laughs> that sound so much. I love that game. So I hadn't much. even thought about that. I'm, I'm so gonna be paying funny. extra close attention. The, what do you do? You not play this shit with headphones? What do you? No, I do. Of course, it? I do. I mean, I just like that noise of, is just never really done. This. It hasn't had the same impact oh, on me wow. as it had on you. No, I, I know what you're talking when, about. When, okay, okay. I know oh, what you're talking about. It just hasn't it. like. I love it so much. It does not give me goosebumps, but maybe I'll pay more attention oh. to it now and see if maybe I can I can 
to trick my body whole, into having the same the whole reaction. Underground <laughs> is like the best. I I fucking love it so much, dude. Also, I, Robin I, didn't go. Like in, fa- Robin didn't even go down into the depths until after she had cleared three dungeons. That yeah. is, the, it's the, wild. The it's crazy. Make that game for me. It's I love exploring in this game. The whole fucking game. I what I found. I don't know what y'all know. I I don't know what I found. I think I may have just accidentally stumbled into like the final part of the game. I'm not going to talk about it. Hmm. But like the trek I took to get there, I was like, what am I finding? Because it, it was it was one of these things where I, I, I was like, oh, down, down, down. Okay, here I am. Oh, well, I guess there's not much here. I'm just going to go back out. Or I died and I'm like, ah, fuck it. And then I went back down and I'm like, this is weird. There's got to be something here. I couldn't find it. And it took my third time of doubling back. And I'm like, oh my God, wait a minute. This goes deeper. Wait, this goes so much deeper. And I just kept going and going. And I'm like, I should not be here. <laughs> I, <laughs> I have made a mistake here. <laughs> and I don't why I just love this game so much. I love it so much. My God. It's pretty wild. Everything I look for in a game. Ugh. Um so my four player minute, I'll just uh I'll just say I've I've been tweeting about it. I've been pretty vocal about it in Discord. I I can't help but be very disappointed by Final Fantasy 16, which is so weird because I started Stop so. I, no no no, it's true. Fuck you. It's true. Oh oh, I am, oh, oh playing the game. Okay, I thought yes, you were about the sorry, sorry. No yeah no no, no absolutely so you, playing so the you game. Did, you did all the Titan stuff and you're still like. Nye. I am 32 stupid. hours into the game. I just did the Titan stuff the other night. I've moved. I've gone past that a little bit even. Was it not exciting? Epic. No, it's exciting. It's fine. But dude. Let me tell you. Let me tell you. Any time I spend in final in this Final Fantasy game doing anything that's not on the main quest line is the most boring You've shit been I've ever. You've been side quests. You've been doing it to yourself. Dude, it's Final fucking Fantasy. I used to yeah. live for this shit. Final Fantasy but seven, no eight, final nine, Fantasy ten, has twelve. Quest like this. No, d- I know. So many Final. Listen, bitch. This is my four player minute. My history with Final Fantasy is I have played so many Final Fantasies where where side quests was like. I was obsessed with. I loved the. I and, and like I would. I spent. I've played hundreds of hours of Final Fantasy, and I have never once felt the need to mainline a Final Fantasy game. I went into this game very open minded about the fact that it's changing genres, that it's more of an action game than an RPG. But like, and that's not why I'm upset. Honestly, like I enjoy the combat. I enjoy anytime there's story shit happening. I'm like engaged. I'm fully fucking locked in and engaged. I'm enjoying what's happening. I'm enjoying the characters. But sure. but anytime name, name a side quest in Final Fantasy X. Are you or Final fuck, Fantasy IX. Are you are you fucking I'm serious saying, right now, Brad? What name are you doing? Woman. <laughs> name no, woman. I'm saying like 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 the, there's no like no game was structured like this. I I think your memory of like doing all these no, side quests in dude. older Final Fantasies isn't a thing. What are, are you talking about? Side quests? The, yes, there, they there's... fucking were, dude. Are you? Don't sit here and tell me that I didn't spend. Countless hours in Final Fantasy seven, eight, right. nine, there is and stuff to do. But but we're talking like, like why am I even there's talking? Like, there's like fifty side quests in like who knows Dude, how many. I spent I spent in Final Fantasy in Final Fantasy sixteen. There's like dozens and dozens of side quests Dude. in like an old Final Fantasy. There's like six. No, dude, dude. I spent probably. Seven or eight hours alone dodging lightning bolts in Final Fantasy no, X, and, and I had more up. fun doing that than than anything. Unlocking all the final weapons. Uh, final parts, weapons. And that was the well, one for Lulu. No, fu- I played the game, but I'm oh saying my. it's not a game filled with. Why am I even quest. talking? It's, what am I even? T- why am I even fucking you, talking, I'll Brad? Up, I'll shut up. the fuck up! I'm just I'm saying, saying, I disagree. You're, I disagree. you're like mansplaining Final Fantasy to me right now. Like that's what's happening here. Like I can't I, like, mansplain don't... Final Fantasy to someone. I played him too, Nick. <laughs> I played them too, bro. I know you sitting here telling me that my memory of of Final Fantasy, a game that I grew up loving, that that like literally made me into like turned me on to video games in the first place, is wrong. Is just crazy to me. It's I'm fucking not crazy. It's wrong. I'm saying nostalgia is a powerful thing, and memories are weird. There is so mom and dad fight. Final Fantasy you're, 16 you're. is so goddamn linear, and anytime you diverge from that path, it is the most boring shit. I have ever like I spend more time scrolling Instagram on my phone when like I've gotten I've gone down Instagram holes because someone's talking in a side quest and then like 30 minutes later I'm like oh fuck I should probably get back to the game I'm just sitting here staring at this guy like it's it's you're right the thing is I agree with you about Final Fantasy 16 but I don't think that 
they're bad because it's worse than older Final Fantasy. I think they're very different. Even the way the side quests are, these suck because it's countless MMO side Wait, quests. What, what are you talking? That's my point. They're different. Like this Final Fantasy is 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 disappointing no, to no. me. Yes. Oh my god. And I agree, it's disappointing to me for the same reasons. Then what are we no, arguing I'm saying, about? I'm just saying we're putting older Final Fantasy up on a pedestal. And there were some like great things you could do on like disc threes and stuff, but they're still like super linear games. There that you weren't really doing like a lot of the side stuff until like towards the end of the game. And it really was like Dude, let me six, tell you right now ten things to do, well, right? Let me tell you let me tell you right now. Like there is something to be said about the fact that classic Final Fantasies, even though, yes, the story progresses in a linear fashion, the fact that you are actively exploring environments, go, physically walking between places when you're on a, on, a, on a world map, that makes that game feel way bigger and way less restrictive than it actually is. 100% and agree. So but there is a problem. Side quests. I'm not saying that's, that's all. I'm saying this is a combination of problems. It is... Inc- it is it is insanely linear. Like, they give you a chocobo in Final Fantasy 16. I don't understand why. Because yeah, I get on a chocobo, it, 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 I walk... I, areas quicker. It, it sucks, yeah. I, I get on a chocobo, I walk 10 feet, I have to get off my chocobo to fight. And then I get back on the chocobo, I walk 10 feet, I run through another minute, I get off my chocobo, I fight. It's just it's just everything about the side quest and the way Final Fantasy has, is, is designed. Not even talking about the genre sh- shift. I Like I said, I'm fine with that. Just there's so much that is making this game feel like a slog, and I but I am invested in the characters and like the main through line story, and I want to I want to see that to the end, but just which yeah. sucks because I could be playing Tears of the Kingdom, I could be playing Dave the Diver, right. which I'm I'm still dabbling in those and things. Those games but like, are better. Those games are better. But what one thing you can say about sixteen that you can't say about older Final Fantasies? There's far 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 more world building in this game because you are getting that through side quests, I don't and maybe even... you think they're they're boring, but like you definitely didn't get that in Final Fantasy Nine. You couldn't just talk to a, a, an NPC in a town for fucking an hour like you can in Final Fantasy 16, much less do it dozens and dozens of times on all those side quests. It was every town person said one fucking thing, and most of the time it was I, pref- I prefer that shit. I would, I would, take, that, I I would take that I any day. But, but I'm saying there is a like there is a positive that people get out of doing these side quests that you didn't get from the other Final Fantasies. And it's the kind of thing that that, that people who don't mind like the slow pace of them are getting out of. I was kind of pushing back this on the, the last podcast we did where while I'm not jiving with it as well and I'm very much where you are, there is like a value to that stuff. It is... It really is fleshing out that world and these places that you're going to even if they are a little like the pacing is all off and they do too much of it at once. And what you're doing in those quests is just walking into a place and talking to someone else. The stuff itself is not like bad and it is adding to that world. And I don't, I don't think I it worked in that. like a realm reborn, like, like it's very MMO, but like, you know, that Look, game had the benefit of being hundreds and hundreds of hours long, and this is still just... I'm just saying, I had I, I put a lot of f- stock in this game. I, I had a lot of faith or hope in this game being kind of the game that turned, that kind of was like, made me fall in love with Final Fantasy again. Because it's been a long time since I've truly oh. felt like I loved Final Fantasy. Um, I wanted that and, too. And this, I just yeah. don't think this is it. Like, I would... I would rather like I, I I wish that I would if this game just dropped all the side stuff and it was just a linear, halt, like run down a hallway, fight things, watch a cutscene. I would probably like this yeah. game better. I mean, I've one side quest to get a chocobo. If it if it doesn't have a plus on it, I don't do it. And if it does have a plus on it, I I look it up and see what the reward is. And if it's bullshit, I don't do it. That's a good that's a good strategy. It's yeah. it, all I'm saying is. Uh, Final Fantasy 16 is quickly shaping up to be perhaps my biggest disappointment of the year, and which is crazy because like the story oh, is Red good. Ball. No, no, I think this is. I think the, I mean, Fantasy Critic, yes, Redfall. You were excited. But no, not even Fantasy Critic. You were excited about Redfall. I do not feel as burned by Redfall as I do Final Fantasy 16 in terms of like my personal in like where my interest in gaming lies. I am I know devastated. Where Nick's I am devastated yeah. that this game is not what it what I was hoping it would be. Just like I don't know. I don't know. It's it's bizarre. It's bizarre. I've never loved a story while at the same time just wishing it would end. 
you know? Wow. It's, so like, so like, but you still have a lot left, and you're already yeah. wishing it for it to end. I'm, I want, I, I, I want to find, I want to finish it this weekend if I can at all, if it's at all possible, so I can get back to Dave the Diver, so I can get back have to you Tears done of the Kingdom. Bahamut stuff. No, I mean, I'm starting. I'm getting into that area of the game. Like, I'm hit, that character is becoming more active, um, and so yeah. is the character involving Odin. Um, but you know, I don't think, I, I don't know. It's just. My, my my thing has gone not, on too I'm long. I'm not even I disagreeing just... with you, Nick. We are very, very similar places. Um, if you keep playing Final Fantasy VI, motherfucker, yeah, I, 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 I would better, rather be playing some Final Fantasy VI. Side quests in those games. There's not a lot of them, but they're potent. And if you crit pat that shit, I don't want to hear hear it about these old Final Fantasies having cool side shit because it's in Final Fantasy VI. You got to work for it. I know you've always like, dude. Final, there's some great side shit in Final Fantasy nine and Final Fantasy eight and seven and ten. Like it's just it's none of that's here. None of that. None of that stuff is here in this game, and that's terrible. All right, I'm done. I'm sorry that went longer than I anticipated, guys. That's yeah, our show tonight. Thank you so much for listening, Carlos. Thank you for being here. We'll uh, we'll uh, you know, chat more about this as we get towards the end of the year. I'm interested to see how Fantasy Critic ends up coming together by the end of the year Shit, anything could happen at this point um we'll be back next week with a regular episode where we talk about video games that we're actively playing in the meantime fourplayernetwork.com is the website of course you can join us in discord at discord.gg slash fourplayer that's most important um and uh be good to each other play video games good night <laughs>